Hello. You are listening to the Grieving Parents Sharing Hope podcast. We are here to walk with parents on their unwanted journey of child loss, guiding them to a place of hope, light, and purpose, not in spite of their child's death, but as a way to honor his or her life. And now, here is your host, author, speaker, and bereaved parent, Laura Deal. Hi, I am guessing you are like me in that it seems everywhere I turn since the week after Christmas, I see someone talking about their goals for the new year or someone sharing how to make sure you keep those goals and New Year's resolutions, maybe even offering to, if you pay them money, that they'll help you reach your goals for this coming year, right? Well, I am one of those who will sit down and write out some goals each year, usually more than I can achieve. And as I was praying through these things a few days ago for this coming year, in my head, I heard the words, I just want to survive. It was as if that first year after Becca died came back to me. I just wanted to survive, to get through the year, sort of. I really wanted to go be with Becca. I wasn't suicidal. I just did not want to be here anymore. Even though I had four other children, two granddaughters, one of them was Becca's daughter who had just turned nine a loving husband. Both my parents were still here. I had an international ministry that I loved, but I just didn't want to be here. And I think you know what I'm talking about. Since letting me leave this earth soon did not seem to be in God's plan for me, my goal became just to get through the year. However, I soon got to a point where I could not bear to see myself just living in the shell of my body, just waiting around for who knows how many years to die and go be with Becca. At some point, if you aren't there yet, you will be. It may not seem like it, and you may be thinking, maybe you got there, Laura, but I don't see that happening to me. That's okay. I have been told that by perivers for over 10 years now, only to watch each one of them eventually get there themselves and start telling others that they will too because they felt the exact same way. So if your goal for this year is just to survive like it was for me at the beginning, or maybe you're ready to go beyond just surviving, you're like the point I got to where I just, I couldn't, the thought of just living in the shell waiting to die, I just needed to get past that somehow. But maybe you're not sure how to just survive or how to go beyond just surviving. I thought I would share a few ways to be able to do that. A while back, God gave me an acronym for the word grief. G-R-I-E-F. Now, just as a side note, this is the entry for September 30th in my book that will be coming out in the spring. This book is a full year of daily readings, along with a short reflection and an appropriate Bible verse for each day. And I'll tell you how you can find out more about that in a few minutes. So here it is. Let's go through this. Grief, G-R-I-E-F. G, give yourself lots of grace. Don't compare where you are on your journey with others, especially where someone like I am, who's been on this journey for 11 years. Don't even compare yourself to where I was that first year, that second year, wherever you are. Don't put yourself on a timetable and don't expect too much from yourself because you're going to be forgetful. You're going to feel like maybe you're crying all the time, that you can't function. Be kind to yourself. You are going through a trauma. The death of a child is a trauma. That's what experts and psychologists say. And a lot of us have PTSD on top of that trauma. So give yourself lots and lots of grace and allow yourself lots and lots of time to work through this. And it doesn't matter if other people understand this, they won't. I mean, I didn't understand it before I lost a child So I can't expect people around me to understand it. But those of us who have lost a child, we do. We get it. So there's no right or wrong way. It's whatever way works for you at that moment in time. R, release yourself from the guilt, especially the should-haves and the if-onlys. Those 
will torment us so much. I should have done this. I should have seen this. If I would have only, if only I had made this decision, if only I had done this longer or done this better. And my friend Glenn Lord, and you may have heard other people say this, you have to stop shoulding on yourself. I should have, I shouldn't have. Now, if you had a friend who was blaming themselves for their child's death, you would immediately tell them, stop it. This was not your fault. There's nothing you could have done. It's a terrible burden for your friend to put on themselves, right? To blame themselves for the death of their child. So don't do it to yourself. I am the friend saying, stop blaming yourself. You did everything you possibly could have done with the information you had. How do I know that? Because you love your child so much, so desperately. You did everything you could possibly do for your child. And yes, if you'd have known, maybe you would have done something differently or you would have changed something or made a different decision or done something differently, but you didn't know. And the decisions you made were the best decisions you could have made at that time with the information you had. So why wait? until you're with your child, to release yourself from the guilt. Release yourself from the guilt right now. And don't say, I can't. I'll say this as gently and as lovingly as I can. But most of you are choosing to hold on to that guilt. It's not that you can't. You won't let go of it because you're hanging on to it as a way to punish yourself. You feel like you deserve to be punished because For some reason, you feel like it was your fault your child died. Regrets and guilt do not serve you well. It just keeps sucking you under. Now, I don't know if you've gone back to the very beginning when I first started the Grieving Parents Sharing Hope podcast, but the first eight episodes I did were on forgiveness. And one of those episodes is on forgiving yourself. And if this is an area you struggle in, Go listen to that, and I'll put a link to that one in the show notes. I, ignore those who want to try to fix you. They may mean well, but if they have not lost a child, like I already said, they cannot possibly know what you should or should not be doing. I've lost a child, and I still can't tell you what you should or should not be doing. I can make suggestions, I can tell you what helped me, but there's no way I know what you should be doing for yourself. People who have not faced the loss of a child may be telling you that you need to move on, that you need to get past it, or you need to find a way to have closure. These are all people who don't want to see you in so much pain. They love you, they mean well, but to say it bluntly, they just don't know what they're talking about. So ignore those who are trying to fix you. We can't be fixed, right? I would say, unless you can bring my child back, you can't fix me. E, engage with other perievers. Now, if you're new to listening to this podcast, a perever is a parent who's been bereaved of their child. I know there's no word that can describe our pain, but there is this word perever that just kind of brings us together to say who we are because our children are part of our identity, right? And this whole identity now is we're a parent who's lost a child. I remember when Becca first died, those first few months, year or two, I would want to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Laura and my daughter died because I felt like that that's who I became. That's who I was. That became my identity. This word perever, parents who've been bereaved of their child, The root word for bereave is the word reave. And if you look that up, the definition of that is a ripping, a tearing away, something violently taken. And that's exactly how I felt when Becca died. I felt like she had been torn from me, violently taken from me, robbed. I was robbed. And so when you put the PA for parent in front of the reave for bereaved, you get a parent who's had their child robbed, taken, stolen from them. And so that's the definition of perever. So back to what I was saying, engage with other perevers, parents who've been bereaved of their child. 
we can help you know that everything that you are thinking and you are feeling is normal. When I first lost Becca, I didn't want to be around other perivers. I didn't want to be around other people who lost a child because I knew what a mess I was and I didn't want to hang out with other people who were a mess like me because I thought it would make me feel worse. And it will make you feel worse if you hang out with other perivers who are feeling hopeless, who are years down this road and they have chosen to become a victim of what happened and they are telling you that you will never get past this. You will never be better. But there are those of us who have refused to let that be our story. We didn't know how to get out, but we were determined that somehow I'm going to live again for my child. I'm going to live in a way that honors their life and not stay stuck in the darkness of their death. And we can be your hope for you when you don't have your own. We can be a light in your place of darkness. We can be an encouragement that you can learn to live a life of meaning and purpose again. Perivers, we need each other. We need to have others around us who get it, who understand it, that we can walk this together and be there for each other. The last letter, F. Find a way to honor the life of your child. The ways we can honor our children are endless. Finding a way to honor the life of your child will help in not staying stuck in their death, which was a moment in time, an important and devastating moment for sure. But I don't want to live my life from the position that my daughter died. I want to figure out how to live from the place of my daughter lived and her life mattered and I want others to know that. We do have in our library on the GPS Hope website, we have a member's library. It doesn't cost anything to be a member of our library, but there are all kinds of resources, downloadable PDFs, a couple of books in there, all kinds of resources and help for you. And there is a list in there of suggested ways of honoring your child. So go to the website, go to the member's library, give yourself a password and your email, just stick in the information and get access to the library and find this PDF there if you're interested. So if your goal is to figure out how to survive this new year without your child, those are five ways that might help. They're good goals to have, whether you've been on this journey for three days or 30 years. Let me run through them again real quick. G-R-I-E-F, grief. G, give yourself a lot of grace. R, release yourself from any and all guilt. I, ignore those who are trying to fix you. E, engage with other perivers. F, find ways to honor the life of your child. There is something else I want to share with you today that might help you survive this coming year. For, uh, it's got to be well over 20 years, I have asked the Holy Spirit each year to give me a scripture, a verse for that year, a promise I can hold on to, or maybe something he wants to work in me or out of me. Sometimes I know what that verse is before we even get into December of the year I'm still in. I've also not known what that verse was until I'm like halfway through February and I finally have a verse for that year. This year, it seemed my verse came to me right as last year was closing out and the new year was revving its engines to come in. And that verse for me this year is Ephesians 3.17 from the Passion Translation, which says, Then by constantly using your faith or your trust, the life of Christ will be released deep inside you and the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. There is so much here in this verse, and I wrote it on a whiteboard. It's in front of me every day. Dave put little hooks up. My desk is the dashboard of the Hope Mobile, and he put little hooks up in the top 
up here and so I can hang my little whiteboard when we're parked and I have that verse in front of me so that I can see it and meditate on it and pray it through, just pray about it every day. There is so much in this verse and I am looking forward to how God wants to apply this to my life in a very personal way this year. Now, some years, I will also ask the Lord if there is a word for me to lean into for the year. And as I was praying about this, the word union kept popping up. So I've claimed that as my word for this year. And I've already learned some pretty personally amazing things that God has shown me about how he wants to see that word at work in my life. So you might want to consider either asking the Lord for a verse for you for this year, a scripture, or asking him for just a word, a simple word that you can just really pray about and think about and study in the Bible, look up its definition, and just let God minister to you that way through this coming year. As I was preparing this podcast episode, a Periver posted something along this very topic and I got permission to share it with you here. She said, I'm posting a picture of just myself for the first time since my daughter passed away. I can hear her saying, Mom, seriously, stop obsessing over me. You have other daughters that need to see you being the strong, independent, and determined woman you've always been. I vow that this year will be lived to its fullest. I will find smiles behind the tears. I will find the mission behind the conflict. I will find forgiveness in all things. I will find a way to love my daughter and live life hard just like she did. I want to encourage you to make maybe your own declaration for this year. It may be as simple as I will survive. I don't know how, but with God's help, I will. It could be, like I've already said, holding on to a special scripture or having a word that you study and lean into as God works in the darkness of your grief. Once you know what that is, I would love to have you share it in the comments under this episode on the GPS Hope website. I'll put a link to that in the show notes for those who are listening on an app and not to the audio directly on the website. Many of you have heard me say this before, and if you have, it's always a good reminder for us. I used to have what almost felt like panic attacks when I would think about getting further and further away from Becca. Two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, I could barely breathe thinking about it. But one day, Holy Spirit spoke to my heart, and I will say to you what he spoke to me. You are not getting further away from your child. Each year, each day brings you closer to seeing him or her again. That brought me comfort. It didn't remove the pain, but it took away that feeling of, of panic and just that, that feeling of hopelessness that paralyzed me. Here on earth, we are bound by time, but Father, thank you that there will be a day when that is no longer the case. We will be with our children and with you, no longer struggling to survive and fighting the grief and pain each year, but we'll be in a place where we will thrive in the perfection of your love with a joy that is unspeakable, that goes beyond words and full of glory that far outweighs every ounce of suffering we have experienced here on this earth. Thank you. Father, for those things. And that's what we will hang on to in this coming year. I said I would tell you more about my newest book coming out soon. It's called Reflections of Hope, and it is a robust book with a year's worth of daily readings. Now, each reading is two pages or less, so it's a robust book because it's 360, actually 66 days. I even have a reading in there for the years of leap year. And this book is just for bereaved parents. Each reading includes a short reflection and a relevant Bible verse to help you find encouragement and strength in the midst of your pain. That reflection in the Bible verse is part of those two pages. It's not a devotional book that you have to keep up with each day. So what if you miss a few days or even a few weeks? It doesn't matter. Just pick up the book and read the entry for the day you're in. 
right now we're planning to release the book on April 13th, which is Becca's birthday. If you want to know more about the book or find out how to get updates on it or be one of the first to know, I'm going to send out an email to people who want to know about the book as soon as we have a, a confirmed available date for it. If you want to be one of the first to know about that, just go to gpshope.org slash reflections and you can sign up to get occasional emails about this book as we get ready to put it into the hands of those who want and need it. I also mentioned the GPS Hope and Healing Weekend Retreats. The next one is the first weekend in March at a luxury villa in the Orlando, Florida area. We keep them small and intimate, and three of those spots are taken. Now, this retreat is both for couples and those who may be coming solo. The venue is being sponsored by Crunch Fitness in honor of Lou and Val Breslow's son, Eric. So the cost is very low. So don't think in your head, I probably can't afford that. Check it out. You can find out more and register by going to gpshope.org slash retreat. Now, you may also find a second retreat posted there. Last night, as I am recording this, we were able to secure a venue in the Washington, D.C. area, and that will be in July. So if you're interested in that one, if you're out on the East Coast, check the retreat page, gpshope.org slash retreat. If it's not there, just check again in a few days. It'll be up there soon with all the information. Last thing, if you want to be part of our private Facebook group, you can find us in the search bar as GPS Hope. Now, there's a public group that will show up at the top of the search. That's us, too. It's just public. And, of course, you can give that page a like. But you will also see a GPS Hope private Facebook page, which is where I hang out and where we ask each other questions. We encourage each other. It's a place where we can talk about and share our kids with each other with others who want to hear about our children and see their pictures. It's a safe place for those whose faith has been shattered or may be struggling with things like why. When you request to join this private page, be sure to answer the two questions or your request will be denied. And if you want to let others know about the group, don't invite them because then they don't answer the questions and I have to decline them. Send your friend a link to the page and then encourage them to join so that they'll answer these questions. All right, let's go ahead with our birthday segment. Before I get started with the birthday segment, I want to remind you that once your child is announced, if we do not receive another request for the following year, your child is removed from our list and the birthday segment. If we don't do that, the list grows to where some of the episodes could have this super long list of birthdays being announced for families who are no longer even listening to the podcast. When Dave sends out an email to remind you that your child's birthday was announced on that week's podcast, he also reminds you to sign them up again if you want them shared the following year with a link to click on to do that. I'm telling you this because I removed quite a few names this time because we did not have a request to share them again this year. So with that, we only have one birthday to celebrate together this week. Mackenzie Barnes was born on January 9th and is forever 22 years old. We celebrate with her family the day Mackenzie came into the world we know it will always be a special day. If you would like your son or daughter's birthday announced the week of his or her birthday, I would be honored to do that for you. Just go to gpshope.org slash birthdays. Fill out the needed information, including the pronunciation if the name is known to get mispronounced because I want to say your child's name correctly and submit that information. As I said, Dave will send you an email the week of his or her birthday to remind you to listen, and he will also send a reminder link to have them added for the following year. I want to close this out today by sharing the reflection and scripture from this September 30th reading from the Reflections of Hope book. Reflection. I realize none of these five things specifically brought God into the process, but that is because God needs to be woven into each one of these. 
You can give yourself grace because God is giving you grace. You need to release yourself from guilt because God is not holding anything against you. In fact, Jesus paid a very high price, his own life, to make sure that you are released from all shame and all guilt. Holding on to your guilt is like denying that Jesus went to the cross and died for you. You can ignore others who are trying to fix you because God is the only one who can take the shattered pieces of your heart and bring them back together. Or even find the shattered pieces, right? Just like the Holy Spirit led you to this podcast, He wants to help you connect and engage with other perivers who can walk this journey with you so they can be His words of hope and His arms of love wrapped around you. And God has already made a path for you to walk on that will help you find ways to honor your child while giving you a life of meaning and purpose. Exodus 33, 14 in the message translation says, God said, my presence will go with you. I will see your journey to the end. I would love to hear from you in the comments for this episode. Like I said, especially if you have something to anchor yourself for the coming year to let me know what that is. And I also hope you are sharing the Grieving Parents Sharing Hope podcast with fellow bereavers. As we're now full swing into this new year, I want to remind you to hold on. Pain eases. There is 